there's at least three things I guarantee very few people foresaw before this 2022 NBA season. And that's Tyler Harrell averaging 20 plus points off the bench. Tyler Harrell being the leading candidate for six men of the year by a pretty wide margin. And the Miami Heat having their best season as far as playoff seeding since like the LeBron era. Now, that's not to say I didn't expect this team to be good this year. I'm pretty sure everyone knew they'd be at least an easy playoff team after adding Cal Lowry and just with the progression of their young players like Adebayo. But still, they're low-key overachieving because the 2021 season for the Heat, and especially Tyler Harrow, was very forgettable. I know y'all remember the nicknames. They were getting violated. People were calling them the Bubba Guppies for getting swept by the Bucks after their success in the bubble. And Tyler Harrow was seen as a fraud for being so average after looking like he's up next and going crazy in the 2020 playoffs. But now, the whole narrative is switched. It's looking like Tyler Harrow fooled everyone and as if he tricked the NBA. Because the way he's played this season, he legitimately looks like he could earn an all-star selection within the next few years. And I know that sounds very obvious now, but trust me, if someone were to say those exact words around this time last year, they would get clowned. So yeah, in today's video, we're going to look at Tyler Harrell's performance this season and just how he tricked the NBA because he's going crazy. But really quick before I move on, what's up YouTube? Plug Speaks back with a vid. If you're new, first of all, welcome. Go ahead and sub. Also like the vid if you enjoy. I upload two to three times a week and we are grinding for 5k right now, so I'd most definitely appreciate it. But back to the vid though. Alright, so with me saying Tyler Harrell tricked the NBA, it kind of makes it sound intentional, you know, like as if he planned it, which can't possibly be reality. I mean, nobody intentionally plays under their potential unless you're trying to force a trade and doing your best James Harden impersonation. So I wouldn't really say he tricked the NBA in that sense, but he definitely fooled everyone as far as making his rookie year success seem like a fluke. Because you gotta remember, his performance in the playoffs as a rookie had people saying some crazy things. Stephen A compared Tyler Harrow and Duncan Robinson to Steph and Clay. Andre Iguodala did the same thing except he was really talking about their work ethic. And then on top of these comments, Tyler Harrow was going out and doing things like dropping 37 points in a conference finals game and then becoming the youngest player to ever start in an NBA finals game which broke Magic Johnson's record. So yeah, his success as a rookie set him up for a wide range of wild expectations from both the media and fans. And when he didn't meet these expectations the very next season, he lost a lot of believers. People were saying he was given too much praise too early in his career. The media even gave him the nickname Bucket, and Paul Pierce wasn't messing with it at all. And then Jack Harlow named a whole song after him, and the song did pretty well. So these claims of too much praise a little too early, it kind of made sense. It even got so bad to the point where reports came out that the Miami Heat management was becoming worried about Harold's personal life and quote unquote celebrity status, which then led to reports of him possibly being traded and mainstream media did its thing, pushing trade rumors with him in package deals and there were claims that he's going to be moved in the offseason. Basically just a bunch of overreaction to how much the Miami Heat underperformed in 2021. But fast forward to present day, the Heat have got to be thankful they weren't too spontaneous with their moves because Tyler Harrow has easily been one of their most valuable pieces this season. I mean, really, what team wouldn't want an efficient 20 point per game scorer that's willing to come off the bench? That's a luxury very few teams have and the Heat are one of them. Now, overall, he's averaging about 21 points, 5 rebounds and 5 assists on 44% shooting from the field and a beautiful 39% shooting from three. Just great numbers, it's hard to be mad at that. And I know it's easy to say this now that Tyler Harrell's back to playing at a high level, but I don't care. I'm not really surprised that he bounced back after last year because it's not like he lost his skill set or as if his role on the team changed dramatically. No, so far in his NBA career, he's always come off the bench 
for a majority of the games. And he's always had a role of providing buckets. They haven't needed him to be some great defender. They haven't needed him to be some expert playmaker. They haven't asked him to be Chris Paul. His purpose before anything else is to score. And that's something he does really well. He's a great shot creator. He can pull up from really deep and shoot it with efficiency. His handle is really deceptive. And it's made even more dangerous by the fact that he can actually shoot. And yeah, overall, his bag just continues contains all of the essentials for a modern day guard in the NBA, whether it be a point guard or a shooting guard, you've got to be a threat from the perimeter. And that's one thing Tyler Harrell's been for a while, dating back to his days at Kentucky. So yeah, but anyway, I'm fixing to wrap this video up. I would get into how legitimate the Miami Heat are as the number one seed, but I mean, we're just going to have to see in the playoffs. Nothing can really be proven until then, but I will say, I'm closer to being a believer than I am a doubter. The other day, I just I was just scrolling on Twitter and I seen a tweet that said, with the return of Oladipo, that he have a bench backcourt that's better than some team's starting backcourt. And that's crazy because it's true. Look at the Orlando Magic. It's all love to Jalen Suggs and Cole Anthony, but I can't lie. They're the first team I thought of when I realized that tweet is facts. I mean, their bench backcourt is Oladipo and Tyler Hero. That's mad solid. But anyway, I'm going to really wrap this video up now. Y'all let me know how you feel about Tyler Hero's bounce back season and just how he's playing and the Miami Heat. So yeah, but I appreciate y'all watching as always. Like the sub, share it, sub if new, all of that. And I'm... Thank you.